What is going on guys, Politics Gaming here, and today we are doing one of the first tutorials I have done in a while, so I am actually going to be doing a couple more tutorials just like this, and I know you guys have been quietly and uh, heavily anticipating a brand new tutorial about Power and Revolution, so finally I'm going to start a brand new series about how to do certain things in Power and Revolution. If you have any suggestions of what you want to, want, what you want to know, how to do something in Power and Revolution, please comment down below and just so you know I did start a new membership tab so if you are interested in becoming a member of politics gaming please join the big blue join tab in the comments below without further ado let's go ahead and get into it and do a tutorial about the military and foreign policy all right and now that we are finally in the game we can go ahead and start off with the first point let's go over here to the army tab so usually whenever you start off in a country you are start you whenever you go over to the department of defense or just the army tab uh basically you are met with this screen it shows you your career soldiers your number of conscripts your total number of soldiers and then you have your reservists your commandos their average monthly salary and then your conventional weapons and i'm going to go ahead and explain all of this so career soldiers are the total number amount of soldiers that you actually are employing full-time in the military so these are basically career people who are using the military as their career and so usually um in other games and in real life this is actually split up into several different branches such as the navy the marines and the military and the army but this one is just a combination of all of them so you have 1.34 million active duty soldiers at your disposal that you can throw at the enemy as much as you want now i do not recommend actually doing that but on the way so we do actually have another one which is actually called the number of conscripts this is basically your uh national service your national service is the national service is the mandatory requisitioning for a given period of time of young men older old enough to serve in the armed forces of the of the country the conscription is the most efficient way to levy a large army on the other hand armies of conscripts often slow to deploy may present huge efficiency issues if compared to professional armies now this is actually a very very efficient way to build up your military and actually get some people into the reserves because whenever you actually do something like that it adds them into the conscription and then whenever they're in there for a certain amount of months they act it actually adds them to the reserves so depending on how long your uh national services so if i set it for three months it's going to be extremely expensive but it is actually an extremely efficient way to levy again levy a large army as the description says so the longer you actually do this i actually don't know the benefits of doing a longer national service but usually doing it between three and 12 months is actually a really efficient way countries such as israel actually do it for two years and there are other countries in the world that already actually actually have a national service of most prevalent one is actually Russia um, a way to actually manage the economy is immediately whenever you get into the country and if it has a national service always check to see if it has a national service and so if it does have a national service immediately get rid of it it's going to probably be a little uh, down down on your uh, chief of staff but it is actually a really really easy way to manage your economy on to the next point we actually do have someone that you have to keep happy in order to stay alive in the game this is going to be the chief of the army basically if this guy really really does not like you and it re really comes down to the loyalty via vis-a-vis -vis the in the head of state uh, basically this guy has the power to overthrow you and if you do not do what he says or if you don't at least you know pay attention to the army he will overthrow you in the coming months it usually always ends up in a phone call and then that phone call ends up telling you that there is a military coup actively happening in your country so the realism on this i don't know the you know the realism on that especially in the united states is very unlikely that we would ever be thrown over in a coup but that is a feature in the game and so to prevent a coup from happening you need to make your military happening and really easy way to do this is by increasing the number of career soldiers that you have in the military and then also increasing the number of reservists that you have 
uh, the reservists as well, as well as commandos. Commandos are extremely efficient, and I'll get, the, get to them in a couple of minutes. Uh, another really easy way to do it is just to increase the monthly pay that they actually get. $3,664 a month is their ma average monthly pay. So increasing that is a really, really easy way to do that. And then, so coming down, we actually have conventional weapons. So the first one we actually see is the the newest feature actually is going to be this one. It's actually the amount of missiles that you actually own. So these are missiles that your missile launchers and your uh, jets are actually using to bombard certain targets. So such as aircraft carriers, uh, ships, other tanks, troops. You usually are using missiles to actually attack these people. So increasing the amount of missiles that you actually have is very beneficial to you and make sure that you actually pay attention to it because if you are actively in a long stretch war if you are not paying attention to these tabs you will actually lose your war because you will run out of equipment so coming down we actually have uh, the ranking system so these are the levels of equipment that you actually have your hands on at the beginning of the game so they actually have five levels that they are that you are able to develop rank one is the going to be the most common that you actually see throughout the world these are going to be like your very very uh inefficient not that great tanks they have an attacks potential and defense potential of 12 they're very slow and they also use barges to move around everything is going to use a barge to move around rank two is basically uh just a couple points higher than that usually not a lot of countries are producing rank two tanks rank three are going to be the most other common tank that you're going to come across these are going to be developed by larger countries such as china the united states russia the united kingdom germany in israel and france those are going to be the most advanced tanks that you're going to come across in the world uh, and then going over to missile launchers is going to be rank one is going to be the most common one you're going to see and especially rank one uh, missile launchers and vehicles in general those are going to be the most common ones you're going to be able to buy from the black market rank two you're not really going to come across a lot especially in like lesser developed countries it's going to be the mo more medium developed countries that are going to have their hands on these kinds of weapons uh, rank three is going to be the ones that are having the uh, largest countries in the world again the united states uk israel germany and france those are going to be the ones that have their hands on rank three tanks or uh, missile launchers so then we come over to rank four missile launchers these are going to be the very very long icbm-esque kind of things that you have in the game these are very very rare to have in the game and the only countries developed that actually have these developed in the world are going to be north korea china and russia russia and china are only going to be the only ones that actually have their hands on development of these kinds of weapons but the north koreans do have their hands on these kinds of weapons too these are just basically just to have a, have the ability to launch extremely long range missiles against your enemies if you are in control of these countries so if you are in control of uh north korea so basically you would have your hands on very long range missiles and be able to bombard certain targets such as hawaii possibly and uh other targets in south korea and japan helicopters going to be the same thing rank one you're going to be able to get from the black market this is going to be very prevalent again rank one is going to be the lowest amount uh that you see kind of common in places such as afghanistan and iraq and then rank three you're going to be able to see in countries such as russia and the united states and then same thing with strategic weapons so then this is where we go into a couple of nuclear kind of things so aircraft carriers are actually the best thing to develop the ones that i actually recommend are frigates and cruisers aircraft carriers and nuclear submarines nuclear submarines are not required to uh develop nuclear weapons so to develop a nuclear weapon you have to go and see your army tab and then you have to go to legislation and then you have to develop uh nuclear weapons this is going to be in the nbc tab nuclear biological chemical so the easiest ways to actually levy a large military is going to be something like this so if i go over here to frigates and cruisers go to the united states and if i want to develop a large amount of these weapons then i'm just going to have to do something like this so if i go here over here and i have five of them so i'm going to 
ask for that and then the contract's going to come back from the united states and then it's going to ask it for a higher price go ahead and accept that price but if you do this five at a time and you do this like several different times over you will be able to get a large amount of military equipment at one time i want to develop 40 different kinds of ships you know that's going to take until september 16th 2027 so an easier way to do that actually is by just you know lowering that amount and then just you know developing it at five you're gonna get all that by august so then do five one two three four five times again and then you're gonna be able to get you know 25 different ships at one time so that's actually really really efficient very easy way to actually develop and research a lot of these different kinds of ships same thing goes for aircraft carriers however aircraft carriers are going to take a very very long time to actually build so you know building them one at a time will be the most efficient way to actually do it two at a time three at a time are going to actually take a lot longer than that so if i wanted to do two of them that's not going to be done until march of 2021 unless you really really didn't care and then you're not going to go to war until 2021 if you do one that's not going to be done until april of 2020 so it's still taking a very long time so aircraft carriers are going to be the slowest ones to actually be able to build uh, nuclear submarines are actually very efficient because not do only do they have the ability to actually launch uh, submarine launch ballistic missiles, they actually are able to launch regular cruise missiles. So if I actually went to war one time with the D Democratic Republic of the Congo, I just send a couple of nuclear submarines down there and I'm able to regularly use conventional missiles to bombard their military targets such as the, the Marbo base uh, right here and then Boma and then these two military bases on the eastern side of the country or the western side of the country in Baz Congo region. So that's a really easy way to actually develop and get weapons faster so if you really want to use that kind of tutorial uh, that's my recommendation in using that just develop a very small amount of things and then just get like about 10 or 20 of those kinds of contracts at one time and then you'll be able to get those at the same time and have be able to deploy them easier so a couple of questions that i've actually been been able to uh answer for you guys and i wanted to answer in this video is uh basically how do you get a military base into another country so getting a military base into another country is probably one of the hardest things that i've ever had to be able to do in this game uh, but it, whenever you actually are able to do it, it is probably going to be very beneficial for you, uh, depending on what country you want to do. So if I'm playing as the United States, then I want to deploy military resources to places that uh, could be influenced by places such as China and Russia. So if I wanted to make sure that I have a beachhead or some sort of a placement in the Baltic states, then I would pick one of these states, most likely Estonia, and then ask them to put military rights over here. Basically, I just come over here, create a military alliance. So we already have an alliance because Estonia is in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. All you have to do is get land rights to them, and as soon as you get those land rights, you need to come over here and put this to one authorized. This is going to allow you to build one military base in that country. So if you dismantle that same military base you still have one military authorized base to be able to build in that country however getting authorization to build a military base is probably one of the hardest things that I have ever had to do again it's really really hard because you have to have extremely good relations with these countries to actually do it strategic and economic relationships are the two relationships you have with countries in the game this is going to be your military relationship and this is going to be your trading relationship having stronger trading ties with these countries especially whenever you're importing or exporting to these countries this does improve your economic relationship another easy way to actually do this is by increasing the amount of economic aid you give to those countries strategically that is whenever you are actually helping them in military conflicts as well as actually uh possibly i don't know I, re I really don't know the other way to actually increase your military relations however uh increase whenever they actually suffer disasters such as a nuclear meltdown or oil slick that is actually a really easy way to increase your overall relations with that country for a very temporary amount of time so if you actually really wanted to 
then you could actually do a strategic objective in your in that other country cause a nuclear meltdown and then give that country economic aid to in order to give yourself more leverage over that country so strategically another way to actually do it is actually by building bases in places such as ukraine poland the baltic states turkey um, if you wanted to counter china building them in southeast asia such as vietnam laos taiwan even the philippines uh indonesia australia is a ex extremely beneficial to actually uh you know alleviate some troop movements in tokyo and uh seoul but also it allows you to expand your military strength across the world the united states already has so many military bases all across the world we already have a couple um do we have just one in djibouti we have a couple in the middle east we have one in afghanistan we have several in japan several hundred thousand already in asia at this point so the only thing is is whenever you actually do send these troops out the amount of money that you are actually spending on these overseas costs are going to escalate so the united states at the beginning of the game already spends 188 billion dollars on overseas troops so whenever you actually build a military base in let's say australia and then send about 50,000 troops over to that country you are going to suffer one a very big drop in popularity because people do not like it whenever you send troops out of your country it really is not popular in the game however you will survive it it's not an end-all be-all kind of thing unless your country is extremely pacifist but at the same time please regard about the costs that you actually are having to handle whenever you send troops overseas going on with the military operations tab we actually have a couple of options that we have over here we have the options to declare war on a country we have the options to defend an attacked country and this is one of the easiest ways to handle foreign policy defending an attacked country is actually um a d very different from declaring war whenever you attack a country this is your declaration of war you are not introducing it to congress so it doesn't have to be voted on to go to war with that country but whenever you attack a country again that is your that is the game's version of declaring war so right here we have something called defend an attacked country this is this order results in the deployment of the country's armies with one goal in mind defend a country under attack in order to allow it to win back its initial borders in this logic it is out of the question to conquer the attacking country so this is more of a defensive measure that you can actually use instead of fully declaring war and devoting your military resources against them other country so for example if china in declared war on taiwan and i didn't want to directly declare war on china but i wanted to defend the, the borders of taiwan then i could come over to military operations and then i could come over here i could go to defend attack country and i pick taiwan that allows me to indirectly declare hostilities against china but not exactly declare war and then under that we have go to war siding with a country in conflict basically this allows me to declare war on any country that i feel the need to so if you know turkey was at war with you know greece and i wanted to defend greece in that so basically this allows me to join the war but then also basically declare war against it this is it's all basically some sort of different kind of uh use of de devoting your resources on how you are entering the war because how you enter the war really really matters on that point so then we actually have the launch a procedure to authorize the use of nuclear weapons and then bi biological and chemical weapons uh these are very 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 rare to use and i do not recommend using them in a actual setting unless another country is about to defeat you you are never never recommended to use nuclear weapons using nuclear weapons in an offensive operation will turn the world against you and the united nations will be on your ass about it launch a procedure to authorize the use of chemical and biological weapons is one of the rarest things to actually be able to use in the game you have to have an extremely extremely corrupt chief of army to actually be able to use this this guy very very seldomly ever allows you to use chemical and biological weapons and if you do use them in the war you will have the entire world on you on it because the entire world will not justify you using chemical and biological weapons 
Under that, we have recall soldiers established in another country. This basically allows you to go over to, let's say, Afghanistan, and then I can repatriate all 14,000 people over there. I can hit confirm, and then these soldiers automatically return toward the country, and then that basically ends your military presence in a certain country. So if you invaded, let's say, North Korea, you had troops deployed over there for a while, and then you wanted to withdraw your troops and then organize elections, you would formulate a peace treaty with North Korea, and then you would actually withdraw your troops using that tab. So coming over here to diplomacy, this is the other tab. Do you actually declare uh, foreign policy? So you actually have the management of embassies, foreign embassies, uh, entry bans for head of state, repatriation of nationals from abroad, breaking off treaties with the country, and then managing arms embargoes. Embassies abroad basically allows you to open or close embassies that you actually have in other countries. So basically, if I wanted to see foreign relations with Afghanistan I come over here and then I close the embassy over here and then same thing with that this one manage foreign embassies is foreign embassies that are on your soil so this allows me to close the Afghanistani pan uh, embassy in the United States so I come over here I close that and then that allows me to manage foreign relations with that so let's say if Russia was invading Ukraine so I come over here I want to basically protest against Russia so then I come over here I go all the way down and I find Russia well, let's find Russia Russia is right over here and then so basically I come over here and I ban the head of state from being allowed inside of the country. So basically this allows you, so if I wanted to come over here and invite the president of Russia to a meeting, this automatically cancels the meeting because I banned them from being allowed in my country. So they are not going to be allowed to join into a meeting with the country. And the last thing I'm gonna go ahead and touch on on foreign policy is actually going to be how to manage the United Nations organization. This is going to be one of the main ways you are going to be able to actually declare war on other countries. So basically, one of the ways you actually are able to gather information is going to be through the Secret Service tab. So coming over here, right-clicking on a country such as Libya, you go over to Secret Service, you go to create a network of agents. Then you go over to political spying and clicks political spying another way to do this is by clicking by clicking no priority goals basically your spies will be just doing whatever in that country and if they see an opportunity they're going to report it to you so an easy way to actually get that information is by do pol doing political spying so for example if i get political spying on iran saying that they are doing nuclear testing or if they are selling nuclear weapons to other countries then i can report that to the united nations in one of three ways so i have to provide proof that a nation is a threat to an international security or seize the security council council to denounce a nation that threats and threatens the world this is basically your way of role playing the situation but also these have different completely different outcomes providing proof that the nation is a threat to international security basically says that if i want to uh, declare that Iran is a threat to international security, this basically would allow me to introduce sanctions against Iran. So Iran already has sanctions against them, and there is actually a way, if you are playing as Iran, you are able to actually appeal to the United Nations and ask them to lift those sanctions. So if you are a nation and you have sanctions on you by the, by the UN, so for example, if you were playing as Iran, you actually have the option to come over here, and there is going to be an option to ask the Security Council or the United Nations to lift those sanctions from you. Seize the Security Council to denounce a nation as a threat to world security. Basically, this is the same thing and it still allows you to introduce sanctions against it. And then the third one is usually the most often one I, use, I see used. This one is to ask the Security Council to authorize military intervention against the country. Basically, if I have enough proof to actually limit or authorize military action, against another country, this is where I need to go. Asking the Security Council to authorize military intervention is probably going to be one of the easiest and less risky ways to actually declare war against another country because that country is actually a threat to international security. 
So the United Nations Security Council actually has, uh, you know, the Security Council. The Security Council is a council of five nations, as well as several other, about seven or eight different uh, smaller nations that are on the Security Council. A Security Council vote, it basically works as the countries gather in New York and they vote on what they feel like they need to do for a uh, let's say, military intervention against Iran. So if the United States introduces military intervention against Iran, Russia and China actually have the chance of voting against that. France and uh, the United Kingdom actually have a, the ability to vote in favor because they like the United States. However, China and Russia do not like the United States and any intervention or United Nations Security Council vote is introduced by you. And if Russia and China or any of the security member member councils uh, actually vote against you, that legislation automatically gets voted down. One vote against by a permanent member automatically throws out the entire piece of legislation. Another way to be voted down is whenever the entire Security Council actually votes against you, or if they all abstain. A very common way of actually losing a Security Council vote is whenever all of them or most of them actually abstain from voting. Because there are three ways of you actually voting in a, in a Security Council vote. You have a pro, abstain, or against. Against if you are again if you are a permanent member of the Security Council or if a permanent member votes against the legislation it automatically gets thrown away. So with that I hope you guys actually enjoyed this tutorial. I really want to do more tutorials like this and I'm really hoping that you guys enjoyed this enough to where you want more tutorials such as this. So if you guys like this go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to hit the join icon to join the PG's community tab. And if you guys like this go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching and take care.